Next, we will learn how to navigate through a worksheet easily by using some shortcut keys. These will help in moving to the edge of a selection. Please note that while navigating manually or scrolling up, down, right or left, using the scroll bar, especially when the data content is large, is a very time consuming alternate. Now, in the given example, suppose we want to copy the details contained in column D to column I. Then instead of manually selecting these cells one by one from cell D10 and downwards, we can instead come to cell D10. Then hold the control and shift key and press the down arrow key. And as we can see, the entire column gets selected in a second. Once that is done, then you can copy and paste the details from column D to column I. Please note that for navigating through a worksheet, each blank cell brings a halt to the process and you can try and eliminate those cells to perform data processing instantly. Now suppose instead of selecting these cells, we simply want to move to the ending row so that we could add some info beneath the last row. Then we can simply come to cell D10. Then hold the control key and press the down arrow key. So this brings us to the last cell in the workbook where we have the last cell that contains text. Also note that similar to the downward movement, we can also move up, right and left using the up, right and left arrow keys respectively in conjunction with the control key. Sometimes we may be required to select rows simultaneously which have a gap between each other. For example, let's say you are asked to select row number 21 and 25 together. For this, we will go to cell number D21, press the control key and then select the range D21 to I21. Now hold the control key and take the mouse to cell number D25. Then select the range D25 to I25. So this way the data in both the rows has been selected. This is very useful in case of making charts in Excel. Now let's move on to the next part of the video where we will focus on anchoring cells. This is a very important concept and you should be on the top of this. So in the given example, we are asked to calculate gross profit margin, EBITDA margin and net profit margin. Here we have the total revenue as 10,000 and gross profit, EBITDA and net profit are 4,000, 2,500 and 600 respectively. First, let's look at the normal method of calculating these numbers. For this, we will go to cell number J11 and then calculate gross margin as gross profit upon revenue. That is, we will press equal to G11 divided by D11. Similarly, a beta margin will be and net profit margin will be so this is fine in case we have a small set of data and in case the data set is large putting the formulas again and again will be a painful and time consuming exercise hence we have something called anchoring cells or freezing cells option available in excel where you can fix a base cell using F4. So let's see how it can be used in our example. So first we will go to cell number M11 and type equal to G11 divided by D11 and then we will press F4 to freeze D11. Please note that there is a dollar sign in front of both row D and column 11. So this is because we want the revenue figure in cell D11 to be the base for calculating all the three profit margins. So as you can see, the gross profit margin comes out to be 40%. Now we will drag the formula using the Ctrl plus D shortcut. 
So as you can see, the EBITDA margin and net profit margin comes out to be 25% and 6% respectively, which is the same as we calculated in the earlier case. But here, we did not have to put the formula manually again and again, so we saved a lot of time. So this is very critical in building financial models on a timely manner. We advise you to also try out cases where only the row or column will be anchored or freezed. In the next video, we are going to learn how to add and delete rows and columns.